I actually officially as retired from university, but now I'm still with the Center for Environmental Sustainability and Water Security at the university. Uh, I would like to share uh, my experience in dealing with uh, flood as well as some knowledge in urban hydrology as well as forest hydrology, because I started my career at free material as forest hydrology. Uh, if you look at the setup between the forested catchment and urban catchment, because you have forested catchment, uh, if you have rain, actually most of the water is actually infiltrated into the soil, and then it reaches the stream through subsurface storm flow. Eh? So quite significant of the rainfall is intercepted by the canopy, about 15 to 20 percent in the natural forest, tropical forest, and very little actually overland flow or hot on overland flow, which is normally less than one percent, occurring near the stream where the soil is actually saturated. But we have forests like this. If we have urban like this, then most of the water is actually appears as overland flow uh, and which reach the stream very fast and normally the quality is quite polluted. So basically, urban actually transform the surface from pervious to impervious. And we can see in terms of flood trees, uh, we can expect that the hydrograph is uh, peaking very fast as well as the peak flow is quite high. So basically, urban forestry and other flood mitigation approach is the objective is to reduce the peak flow as well as to lengthen the concentration time so that the flood can be delayed. And this is a big challenge. This is a big challenge. Uh, uh, at the same time, there is another issue that we observe in the urban area is that the rainfall intensity is actually increasing from the time. This is actually the real data to compare the rainfall station in the urban area and rural area near Kuala Lumpur by Lee. So it is clear that from 1990 to 2010, the intensity in millimeter power is increasing uh, in the urban area, most likely because of more particles that become, or aerosol that actually have the formation of rainfall, raindrop eh, uh, in the urban area, as compared to in rural area, which is slightly increased, but not as obvious as in the, for, in the urban, er, urban area. Another issue is that our data also suggests that the future rainfall data is expected to be more intense. So we have particle in the urban as well as the climate change also suggests that actually the future rainfall will be more intense compared to the historical record. To the extent that we have to change the intensity duration curve and also change the standard for designing hydraulic structure. And if we look at other issues, many urban areas actually sinking. Uh, like Jakarta, Bangkok, Manila, because of uh, load or burden on the surface by building and so on, also because of extraction of groundwater. And another important issue is increasing sea level rise, also expected to increase. So it's already increasing, but with climate change, the rate will be faster. Now, actually, in Malaysia, for example, the rate is uh, about 0 0.08 to 0 0.29 in by 2040, but by 2100, it is expected to increase by 0 0.3 to 1.06 meter, depending on the location. The East Malaysia is expected to see larger sea level rise. So basically all this actually challenge if you were to manage a flood in the urban area. Uh, before we try to propose mitigation measure, I think it's important for us to to understand what is the type of flood. Well, first, maybe we can say Flash flood, which is localized. Uh, normally, in the case of Kuala Lumpur or the big city, we have 70 mm of rain. Uh, total, we can expect some area will be flooded. Right? Then, during monsoon period, when the rainfall is more homogeneous and widespread, we can expect flood due to river overflow. River overflow. This is normally involve much bigger area rainfall in the upstream. Uh, rainfall in the whole basin that actually produce very large amount of flood water and then that cause overflow and flooding. The situation normally become more severe when the heavy rainfalls and then the river overflow coincide with tidal. So basically the tidal increase and then a higher, the, the, there is a tidal and therefore the flood water cannot be evacuated to the stream uh, as during non-tidal, non non-tidal. So basically, when heavy rainfall and tidal occur, the flood will be 
actually more more more, more severe. So back to the what is the prospect of uh, taking vegetation to reduce uh, flood or flash flood in the urban area? Uh, normally, in assessing this, we have term like storage capacity or initial loss of the catchment. Uh, this is basically the amount of rainwater that can be intercepted by canopy and also rainwater that, that can be infiltrated and absorbed by the soil. So uh, this is analysis by my student, basically comparing the uh, uh, hydrologic loss in terms of storm flow volume compared to the rainfall intensity. So if we plot during a uh, rainy season and during dry season, we can have two different, uh, we call it storage capacity. Eh? So during a uh, rainy season, the forest can accommodate about 40 mm of rainfall. Yeah? During dry season, the forest can accommodate more, up to 60 mm of rainfall. So basically for natural forests, the ability of the forest ecosystem or forest catchment to absorb rainfall ranging from 35 to 60 mm of rainfall. If the rainfall beyond this value, basically the excess water will become storm water or flood water. For forest plantation, the storage capacity is reduced, which is between 22 to 40 mm. Eh? And oil palm is less, only about 10 mm. So basically, depending on the type of vegetation, the layer of canopies, the soil depth, the, the hydrologic loss or initial of uh, hydrologic capacity, the storage capacity will, be, will vary from side to side. So this is very important so that we can understand uh, what is the limitation of vegetation in flood control? If the flood, if the rainfall is so heavy, let's say in our case, uh, during a major flood, it is quite common to have 400 to 500 mm of rainfall within three days. So basically, the first day, the soil is saturated, the canopy is saturated, the excess water actually will actually go to the stream uh, or the river as flood water. So that is the limit. So how can we actually increase increase the storage capacity of urban area. Of course, we can increase by providing more pervious area. We can have proper parking lot, pervious parking lot. Or we can increase the storage capacity by possibly introducing, of course, planting more trees. And now we have green roof, for example, vertical garden, even though it's limited because, because the capacity of if the, if the plant is small, it's short, so basically the cap 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 capacity of the plant to absorb uh, rainwater is actually limited as compared to forested uh, vegetation. So I think the best way is to use whatever, whatever space that we have. If we don't have enough space on the ground, we can also use space on the roof, a vertical garden and so on, uh, to capture whatever uh, amount of rainfall uh, before it is actually released to the uh, ground. Eh? Uh, then, of course, this is limited because I mentioned the canopy storage is less and then the uh, area is also limited. We have to couple that with program like rainwater harvesting, like what is said by Pajaria just now at Tatini Park. We can collect the water underground, eh? big tanks. So there are many examples of that and that can be used for water supply. At the same time, that can reduce flood in the urban area. Or we can have detention or detention pond. Detention is basically dry pond. Retention is wet. Or we can have wetland to actually capture uh, flood water. So uh, in the case of river overflow, I think the uh, uh, best way is to have flood levy, something like this. Eh? Flood levy. Uh, this is, there are many examples of this, but I think for urban uh, forestry community, they can make use of the space between the riverbank to the levee, uh, for recreation, for planting trees, and so on. I think you can see this kind of example, um, many of these kind of example in, for example, in Japan, Korea, whereby we have tennis court, jogging track uh, along okay. the river. My apologies, <laughs> we have to be a little bit quicker, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. So basically, we have to make, we have, we, we can choose this, we can have this opportunity to beautify the river banks uh, before the levy, so that that actually can incorporate the urban forestry element. Okay. Uh, there are, of course, uh, guidelines such as urban soil management by our Depart Department of Irrigation in Malaysia, as well as the water harvesting guideline. So basically, as conclusion, I think in order to make the flood control effective in urban area, we have to combine both the engineering 
and the non-enduring approach, including the opportunity to introduce forestry in urban area. With that, thank you so much.